There's a new Tory group in town. Rock yes. on, baby. Love it. To the moon, diamond hands. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, there's 25 of these Tories. Uh, the group is called the New Conservatives. Mostly made up of 2019 intake MPs, but a few 2017ers. Red wall types. Um, I believe it's an amalgamation of both the common sense group of conservatives, uh, which you can basically take to mean anti-woke, and I think also the NatCons. I think there's a few NatCons, but presumably because of the whole Nat C thing, they've rebranded and gone <laughs> new new con neo conservative new Cs new, yeah new, new, nukes. New, new, nukes nukes the it nukes it kind of reminds me of like when the ERG mm. was like you know came back to prominence. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's it. Feels like they're all sort of walking around in the desert trying to find something like the ERG um, to impose their influence. Well, if they had any common sense. Oh, very good. Ooh. Oh, very good. Um, Miriam Cates, who's one of these. Yeah, uh, yeah. well, it's her and Danny Kruger, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's there's quite a few Tory MPs who think that she will be Tory leader in not so long. Bollocks. Yeah. Really. There's there's, there's quite a, a good strong. Um, she's got some good backing. I mean, I don't know if you remember her appearance during the NatCon. Uh, conference. I mean, it's mothers. burned into my oh, brain. Oh, yeah. Mothers. Yeah, mothers, mothers. She did. She stood up and she said that women should be mothers, which is really good for a Tory MP to be saying because that really inspires me to kill myself. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell. Okay. Um, what did so, so Kruger, Kate, who else have we got here? Tom Hunt, Gullis. God, this is a real fucking murderer's row of dickheads, isn't it? <laughs> but can we please talk about Lee Anderson and the drama that unfolded with Lee Anderson? P tell me. So Rishi Sunak was about to unveil like a big, a, a big new pledge. I think it might have been he, he was doing a migration conference or something like that. Oh, correct me. I think it was migration. Anyway, so many press conferences. Where mm. to begin? Um, Lee Anderson then announced that he was going to do this new conservative thing and then like the party phoned him being like you know you are the deputy chair of the party you can't form a faction <laughs> like, yeah. that's just not how this you're goes you're part of the establishment and so then like, basically the majority of this press conference like when it turned to the journalists was kind of like this weird tussle of being like yeah but is Lee Anderson in this group or is he not they're like well he attends the meetings <laughs> but he doesn't actually endorse anything was the label and it. it's just interesting because for a group that is allegedly so straight talking there's a hell of a lot of like you know <laughs> backwards and winding here it's also just such bollocks but like we are anti-establishment you are the establishment you've been you've been in power for 13 years is that's the most establishment if you're the government of the united kingdom that's the most establishment you can be see that's where you're wrong why because it's the blob clearly isn't it? <laughs> the blob is the establishment it's the blob it's just such bollocks. which by the way is definitely cut we talked about this before but no we talked about it with red wave why is every insurgent group somehow a reference to like a woman's menstrual cycle i don't understand it What's the, what, new, why do you both look away shocked I'm sorry new because they're called the new conservatives but you, no no what does that blob. have to do oh oh have fine. you never heard that I you've think. never heard like oh she's on the block yeah, no, yeah, i have get, heard that get the, get the painters round group <laughs> or something like that <laughs> that phrase is but who's coming up with all of this? Uh, um, what's the point of them? What do they want? Fucking attention. Ah, uh, you've got you've cut right to the heart of it there, haven't you? Yeah, gimps want attention. Yeah, that's it. You've cut, you've cut them down. I get, with all of these, it's like, embarrassing. Well, with you saying, oh, you know, they are the establishment. That's kind of the thing for me with every single one. Whether it was the Nat Cons, whether it's these new cons, <laughs> whether it was the Liz Trust Cons, or any other derivation of the cons, um, the King Kong. Exactly. That, that actually would be a better branding exercise for them. They should, they should look <laughs> we are a King that. Kong. Yeah, big, big, big Charlie heads. Pro big... enormous ape fighting. Oh, I was going more <laughs> for King, the King Charles, but yeah, it could be King Kong. But look, oh. I think, like you said, you've been in power for so long. Oh, just you can't grow it's, up. The, the, does it not? Do you, does it not compute that when you stand up and say you know things are going in the wrong direction? Like, surely this is just a huge open own goal, not only for the, the Labour Party, who I'm sure are quoting, uh, clipping up and quoting every single one of these things to put on an election leaflets when it comes to a general election. The public, who are not idiots, and know that your party has been in power for the last 13 years, and that when you complain about how things are going, you are literally one of the, how many MPs have they got now? What, like 375 or something? Um, MPs who actually has the power to change some of this stuff. In Lee Anderson's case, you are, you are the deputy chairman of the Conservative Party. Yeah. You should do... Great, great, Lee. Yeah, let's say you agree. Great, Lee. G glad to hear you're, you're talking. How about you do something about it then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you think what they actually are really against is the fact they became MPs to implement their ideas and their ideas are too fringe and nuts 
that the Conservative Party like mechanism going like, whoa, hold your horses, big guy. And they've been like, well, the establishment doesn't like this. That's like when Alex Salmon was standing in to do this program, right? And then he basically done these big trails being like, oh, um, I'm going to talk about the things that no one else will talk about. And so like he gets in and we're doing the briefing before and he just keeps telling us about this like ship that's in Aberdeen. That's like the most important thing that ever happened because they're going to decommission it or something like that. And it was like, Alex, okay, we're going to kind of talk about Brexit today. And he was like, <laughs> he was like yeah, but there's this fishing ship in Aberdeen. It's like, this is, that's to your point. When we let politicians actually talk about what they want to talk about, yep. it's a ship in Aberdeen. Uh, even if that destroys the Aberdeen fishing community. Yeah. Nice one, Ava. Great. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of Sajid Javid as well today. Did you see that? He's come out, oh, sorry, yesterday he came out against the NHS and he was like, no one will actually talk about reform. No one will actually mm -hmm. fund it properly. No one will work on it. And it's like, you were the health secretary. <laughs> he... And Chancellor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that for a relatively short period? No. No, it was just before Rishi. It was just before Rishi, yeah, because he lost that power struggle with Cummings, didn't he? Over, yes, about his yeah. ad. Yeah, I mean, look, this, I mean, I'm looking at the detail of this new new con group now. 12 point plan to achieve uh, reducing immigration includes a, a, a call to scrap health and care visas launched to fill gaps in the health and social care sector with overseas workers. So that would be that would make that would make the recruitment crisis in the care sector even worse mm -hmm. because unable to fill these jobs we're we're hiring people from abroad. That's what's happening there. Right. So they want to. Yeah. They want to scrap that. So there was a really ugly line going around that was briefed out anonymously that basically said, like, do you want your grandparents being looked after by a non white doctor? Stop it. And I, I was looking into it and it was like, it was genuinely like a source close to the group says. Jesus. It, I was like, that can't, they can't have possibly briefed that out. That's absolutely not. I can put it past them. So, Oof. so anyway, it looks like wokeism has claimed another, another victim uh, and it's the new cons there. Do you think we'll ever talk brain, about these people again? Do you, think, do you think they'll do anything? Um, how many of them are standing down? They're, oh, no, because they're all 2019. So they well, they're like, yet, are they? They'll lose their seats. Yeah. yeah do you think Diana Davison regrets announcing that she's going to stand down at the next election now that she's seen this? Because <laughs> Well, because this, this looks sick. Because yeah. this, <laughs> this looks appealing. This I don't know about you, but if I got the opportunity to stand on a plinth with Paul Bristow... <laughs> Have a screaming match. Never look a gift horse in the mouth. Yeah, Brendan Clark. Leonici. He's uh he's another bit of a doyle, isn't he? Leonici as well was one of the um she came out of the woodwork during Liz Truss. Like she pointed out to the cabinet, you know, when there was no one else to do oh, anything. Oh yeah. <laughs> she got on the cabinet. Yeah, she did, so. yeah. God, that fever dream, the halcyon days of the Liz Truss Conservative Party, just extraordinary stuff. Extraordinary. <laughs> I guess it just speaks to you, doesn't it? The I the battle for the kind of this is a cliche, isn't it, in political journalism, but the battle for the ideological soul of the party, the inevitable sort of election defeat that's coming down the road and everyone's kind of jostling for mm. time. Uh, they're, already, they're already pushing their boat out for what the future ideas of the Tory party should, should be and what it will look like. It's, um, also, it's also all these people, you only hear of them when they do something nuts or embarrassing. It's like you, you only hear of Leah Nietzsche when she was screeching about Boris Johnson in the House of Parliament. Like last week or two weeks oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that, that's... Oh, she might have been in Boris Johnson's cabinet over that summer. I think that's what she you meant. She was in one of them. When, yeah, they, yeah. when they, everyone was pulled in. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. it. Sorry, my um, mistake. There's like a vague like word association in my head of like her and Boris Johnson. I feel like they're tied tied in some way. Maybe because of like, what's that place in Italy that he went to they, with Lebedev? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Uh, that dirty, dirty villa with, yeah, okay. Thunder, Jonathan Thunder Collis is quickly becoming one of my must-watch politicians because Why? I just can't quite believe it can get worse every single time <laughs> I see him do something. He, he manages a serious so. podcast, I think. Really? Yeah, it's, it's called... Jonathan, oh. Jonathan Gullis. But you see, like, you know, like... It's called, it's self-titled. No, no, it's not, it's not. But it's called, like, something like, it's called something like Conversations About Power. And it's him and a former spad or former civil servant. And they interview, like, serious politicians. I've never listened to it because I like myself. So, um, but, yeah. He's... I saw there was another, um, another politics podcast launch whilst I was off as well. Uh, Ed Balls and George Osborne. Yes. Entered the fray. Entered yeah. The fray. Uh -huh. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fairly sure they buried us in the charts when they launched. But um, they didn't launch it. What? Are, no, they have. Yeah, they have it. And also, yeah. Why are you saying that? Me, someone messaged me to say R.I.P. Pubcast. 
buried by two. Yeah, but who and, said and, that? That's speculative. Was it like what? What like an austerity nut? <laughs> like who? The... Uh, no, <laughs> it was David Cameron. No, yeah. It, no, yeah. It wasn't. Oh, finally, we're going to get to the bottom of why George Osborne <laughs> starved the country. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting to hear from him. It was not an austerity nut. It was actually someone uh, in a fairly high position of power in the Labour Party, who messaged me to say, "R.I.P. Pubcast." Keir Starmer did that. That's defeated, nuts. <laughs> defeated by two failed censorists. Why is Keir Starmer messaging you insane. about the podcast? He refuses to come on, but he's uh, in my DMs every day. Well, he is your landlord. Yeah. <laughs> You're his landlord, aren't you? Uh, I live rent. He lives. He lives rent. I live rent free, and his head is yeah. So who's he? he but you leave the back my, door open no, for him. He's your landlord, but, but you don't pay him any respect. Yeah, but he, does, I pay him no respect or rent. So no. is he really my landlord? I'm squatting his house. This it it works on some. Yeah, this, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll work. You work that. that out yourself and laugh <laughs> heartily. We'll, we'll write that. You one let us know what you think that joke was. <laughs>